Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are joined by Professor Vikas Raval of the Center for Economic Studies and Planning from Jawaharlal Nehru University. And he is one of the co-authors of a recent report which has looked into the situation of agricultural markets or mandis in India. Now we have seen a lot of reports, uh, media reports, anecdotal reports of the situation, but this is the first study which systematically looks at the situation across the country. Thank you so much, Professor Raval, for joining us. So, could you first give us an outline of what the key conclusions are, especially regarding what is the inflow of produce, uh, where the, has there been a shortage, and what are the uh, what what are the crops that are actually not coming, and which are whereas which are continuing. So, Prashant, uh, when the lockdown was announced on uh, March twenty fifth, essentially you had a sudden problem that uh, you see this is the time when. Uh, Rabi crops are harvested. Rabi crops were either being harvested, some had already been harvested, or some were about to be harvested. In different places, there are some differences in the in the precise time when when this happens. But this was broadly the time when uh, Rabi harvest has to happen. Now it seems government had really not thought about what is going to happen to to Rabi harvest when uh, uh, you impose a lockdown. So as soon as that happened, there was a huge uh, problem that farmers were not being able to sell the crop. And then the government sort of started scrambling for finding ways to get that, get that started. On the 27th, the first notification came, which exempted the markets from uh, the restrictions of the lockdown. Now, what we have done is we have looked at the data for the mandis for the 21-day period of that first phase of the lockdown. To see what happened to the market arrivals, as as it is called, the the arrivals of agricultural produce in the markets during that 21 day period. Now there is a database of the Ministry of Agriculture called AgMarketNet, which provides daily data for a very large number of mandis across the country. So what we did was we downloaded that data set for each day for all the mandis that we could get hold of and looked at the Mondays that had some arrival of these crops in the month of March and compared it with or compared the 21 day lockdown period with the same period in the previous years. Okay, that's essentially what we've done. We are talking of something like 1331 Mondays across the country, which we managed to look at to, to see what exactly happened. Now, what you basically find is that despite this sort of delayed uh, sort of realization that uh, government needed to do something to get the mandis uh, uh, functioning to ensure that the food supply, supply chains keep functioning uh, you know pretty little was actually done you know all that they did was pass some orders to say this is exempted that is exempted but what we really find is that not very much in terms of uh, uh, effectiveness in ensuring functioning of of markets takes place. So just to give you an example, uh, as in comparison with last year, you know, during this 21 day period, if you look at wheat, 688 Mondays out of 1331 that, that we had data on, there, there are others for which data were not available. But if you take what uh, the Mondays for which we had the data, 688 had arrivals of wheat during this period last year. This year in comparison, only 264 Mondays had arrivals of wheat during the period, during this period. Now, this is broadly what you see across all the seven crops that we've looked at. We've looked at wheat, we've looked at chana, which is the most important pulse crop of this season. We've looked at mustard, which is the most important oilseed crop of the year. Uh, of this season, we have looked at potato, onion, tomatoes, uh, and we have looked at uh, cauliflowers. So you know you have uh, a representation of all kinds of uh, crop produce that come to the market at this time of the day, at this time of the year. Now you basically find that across the board, for all the crops, there was a huge shortfall both in terms of Mondays where any arrivals were taking place. So so a lot of Mondays are simply closed. Now, why were Mondays closed despite the fact that uh, uh, the government had exempted them? Well, one most important reason, of course, was that uh, 
uh, you know once the lock the janta curfew was announced and then the lockdown was announced a lot of migrant workers as we have seen had to just uh, go back home you know and they walked back in desperate situations and they just left the towns and went back to their villages and from where they had come now a lot of that migrant labor actually works in the mandis at this time you know a lot of in fact a lot of migration happens because of this harvesting season you know there is harvesting uh, labor required in the villages there are labor required in the mandis for for loading unloading sorting winnowing you know packaging all of that work requires a lot of labor it's all manual so a lot of migrant labor is involved in this and since that migration migrant labor had left and the local labor was essentially confined to their villages you basically did not you had a serious shortage of labor okay and then there were other constraints you know i mean uh, the traders were not sure if they should function there is this whole sort of fear of uh, of uh, of working so you basically find that uh, although the government did the exemption they did not do very much more than that to ensure that the mandis actually function now the even more damning thing comes when you look at the data on actual arrivals the quantity of arrivals that uh, you see in these 20 day one day period now if you look at that 21 day period this year in during the period of lockdown the total quantity of wheat that arrived in the mondays was just 6% of the total arrivals of wheat that happened in the same 21 day period last year okay it's the same thing for chickpea it's the same thing for mustard for for uh, uh, potato you basically had 41% arrivals for uh, onion you had 30% arrival for tomato you had 74% arrivals and so on so so basically a huge shortfall in the arrivals as compared to last year you see in the period of this year's lockdown now if you notice the, so what we've done is we've looked at day by day arrivals okay so you take each day's arrival and compare with the same day of the week last year and you basically find that uh, two things one is that uh, arrivals this year before the lockdown were higher than arrivals last year so we were doing better than last year before the lockdown and then there is a crash with the lockdown you know the lockdown just so sort of everything comes tumbling down right. there is a crash and then you know what one in fact what is striking is that you don't find much of a recovery through the period of 21 days of lockdown so that gap continues the gap between last year and this year continues to rise through the period of 21 days yeah. so not only you had made no plans you had made no preparation you had not anticipated anything you actually did not take any effective measure to take care of the problem so so basically you end up with a huge disaster right. where the crops are unsold farmers are unable to sell their crops they are obviously incurring losses because of it the the crops get damaged particularly perishable crops like tomato if for 20 days you are not able to sell your crop crop is destroyed right. you know? so so massive losses uh, have been borne by by farmers because of their inability to sell the crops this is the time when you sell the crop you get some money and that is the money that lasts you for next 6 months you see right. that's the money that lasts you for your consumption that you need for your consumption requirements right now and the money that you need for investing in the next crop so you see the implications of this are going to be really long drawn out because farmers have incurred massive losses because of inability to sell the crop mm -hmm. so that's essentially what you find in fact what you also then see is that while there is this uh, uh, sort of drop in the quantity of arrivals so the supply has fallen that shortage of supply doesn't seem to have a sort of similar significant effect on the prices right. prices become much more volatile after the lockdown mm -hmm. so so the period of lockdown is is a period in which wholesale prices the mandi prices were fluctuating much more wildly than they were before right you know it's not as if farmers gained because of higher profit higher, higher prices they 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 lost because of low supply they they 
had uh, they did not have any other gains so so you basically have a situation where this uh, disruption of uh, agricultural monday for a fairly prolonged period has really compounded the distress of farmers right so that's essentially what right. report is about right and uh, like you pointed out this is also something that has happened across the country so are there any regional patterns that you were able to notice so certain regions may be getting a bit more affected well i think all the regions are affected very badly uh, there are some regional patterns so we have looked at for example the states now one thing is that across the states i mean this is really something that uh, i mean no state was uh, was uh, uh, able to deal with this uh, barring i think there is one case where you know karnataka for tomato has had uh, uh, some success but you know i mean a crop like cauliflower you know was, the mandi sales were little better but you know cauliflower is a very minor crop in terms of quantities exactly. you know it's it's just tiny yeah. as compared to even potato or onion or, or tomato so you know i mean that's the only kind of uh, marketing that uh, happened but for major crops you basically don't see uh, any state which has done uh, anything real, like you know uh, what could be called reasonably well right. but uh what you do find well one is that we don't have data for all the states hmm. so you know maharashtra for some reason unknown to us had not been reporting data for about a month prior to the lockdown so we don't know what's gone wrong why maharashtra was not reporting for whatever reason then punjab and haryana punjab and haryana the harvesting is late hmm. but mind you punjab and haryana had a late harvest even last year so even last year mondays during that 21 day period did not report any arrivals they have not reported any arrivals this year either mm-hmm. so punjab and haryana by and large for for major crop wheat is the major crop in punjab and haryana did not have any arrivals last year did not have any arrivals this year now that's very important you know initially it was argued that arrivals are slow because of longer winter you see the winter is sort of delayed so arrivals are are right. late in coming it's not true arrivals are were delayed in punjab and haryana that is true but arrivals were delayed in punjab and haryana last year last as well year. Right. so this drop that you see is not because of delayed winter mm-hmm. the drop is simply because your mondays were not functional exactly. the farmers were unable to bring produce to the to the mondays you see bringing produce to the mondi requires mobilization of a substantial amount of labor in the village harvesting threshing winnowing loading putting it in the granary then loading it into the onto the bullock carts or tractor trolleys all of that requires labor and then when you bring it to the mandi mandi requires a lot of labor right. now given the fact that there is this massive shortage of labor people in the villages are not al- allowed to assemble together hmm. to do anything which requires a lot of people to to gather threshing for example is a task where you know th- because this is summer in in north india is typically done at night a large number of workers just get together and do you know 15 people will get together and do all the threshing of a farmer in one night right now if people are not able to 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 get together mm-hmm. because of restrictions the task doesn't get done Right. you know and if you have to start doing it manually or just using family labor then it just gets prolonged exactly right so 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 because of this whole disruption in labor process you have a situation where the entire thing is uh, is not functioning right so as far as the government is concerned and this includes both the central and the state governments what is there anything that can be done at this point of time to sort of improve the situation oh, well i think two things i think first we have to call out the fact that being unprepared is a crime right the fact that you you are in this situation is because when you knew for 3 months that something like this was coming you made zero preparation for this you had no idea you did not think that rabi harvest was a month ago why in the month of february or in the month of january did you not start planning for this you know the fact that <coughs> this was imposed with zero planning with right. utter unpreparedness right. is the crime that has to be 
uh, he called out and they have somebody has to be held accountable for that that's the first thing you know that's that's the biggest crime that has happened this entire thing was well known that it was coming the whole world was good dealing with it okay. and you just didn't think what was going to happen when something like this comes to india what are what are the different challenges that are going to deal with why didn't the ministry of agriculture think of all of this one month prior to the lockdown okay so that's the first thing what can be done now well uh, one is government needs to first give out money to the farmers mm -hmm. farmers are incurring losses farmers are unable to sell their crops you have given them zero assistance you have just given them one installment of pm yes. kisan that also has not reached everybody which in any case was due to them okay you have not given even a next advance installment right. you have not given them any additional assistance to to deal with the with the with, with their losses you have to compensate farmers for the losses they have incurred you do it either directly through state compensation or do it through your insurance scheme but it is something that has to cover practically every farmer an assessment has to be made of losses incurred by farmers and farmers have to be compensated for that mm -hmm. that there is no doubt about that mm -hmm. there are other things that need to be done immediately you need to basically do a loan waiver you need to say farmers loans are waived right okay you need to give them debt relief mm -hmm. okay you need to give them debt relief you need to increase the msp you need to increase the procurement you see there is a problem because you are staggering the procurement now because of this whole need to do social distancing the procurement is going to take much longer right which means that farmers are going to have to incur further costs in maintaining their crops mm -hmm. they are go not going to get their money for a much longer time they will not be able to pay their their loans they will not be able to buy inputs for the next season right. now you know you have to deal with this farmers have to be provided resources to continue and if they if you don't do it you are going to do it at your own peril right. you know farmers Uh, feed this country mm -hmm. if they are not going to be compensated okay you are you this you uh, cause serious damage to rabi harvest now you are going to cause a serious damage to karif crop right exactly. in the coming season mm -hmm. if you don't compensate them now right. so there is an urgent need to provide have a provision for debt relief of farmers for covering the compensating them for their losses and to ensure that procurement happens quickly and procurement uh, is expanded right. you see farmers if you are not able to go to, to come to the mandi you will have to sell do distress sales to traders in the village mm -hmm. who will sell you the produce at much lower who will buy your produce at much lower price right. so government needs to intervene ensure that farmers are able to sell their crop at msp and that would require a huge operation of decentralized procurement exactly. at the village level government needs to state agencies need to go to the village and say we are going to buy, pick up your produce from here right we we'll lift your produce from the village you don't have to come to the mandi mm -hmm. we will lift at msp from you in the village right now that needs uh, the state to invest in this entire exactly process. exactly clear whether the state is even thinking of this right now thank you so much professor i was talking to us thank you prashant that's all we have time for today keep watching this clip Thank <laughs> you.